Hey there. My name is Corinne O'Flynn, and you're listening to the Calm Entrepreneur Podcast. I am a USA Today bestselling author, nonprofit executive, and organizing nerd with over 20 years' experience running my own small businesses. I teach entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, and small business owners like you how to organize your business, find more time, and deepen your alignment practice to experience more calm and confidence every single day. If you're looking for that intersection between practical business advice and spiritual goodness, then you're in the right place. So sit back, relax, and let's dive into this week's episode of the Calm Entrepreneur Podcast. Welcome, welcome to the Calm Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Corinne O'Flynn, and this is episode four. This week, I wanted to talk about morning routines, and the title of this podcast is Master your morning and master your life because having a really solid morning routine can really make or break each day. And a personal morning routine is not the same as a business morning routine. And I want to talk about both of those things. And so this episode is going to be like a mini kit for creating a morning plan for your business and for your life. So I want to walk you through the framework that I use for creating my morning routine, and it's one that serves you mind, body, and soul, and this allows you to start your day ready and energized. There's a reason so many successful people credit their morning routine as a major factor in their success, and that's because having a really good morning routine is vital. Now, this is not to say that the morning routine has to be the same every day, and I'll get into that a little bit in a little bit more detail later on. But what's important is that you have a routine that is prompting you to do different things in different departments of your life every day. So if that be, you know, a quiet practice, for example, I have a quiet practice and that is something like journaling, meditating. It can be, um, EFT tapping. It can be, um, reading. It could be drawing. It could be anything that is meant to bring me back into my body in like yoga or breath work is another one of those things. So my morning routine will have a spot for my quiet practice. But the, I, the, the thing that I do that takes up that time each day might not be the same every day. And that's what I mean about not having it be identical day in and day out, because some people don't function well knowing that there's going to be this monotonous nature to a morning routine. So having a morning routine does not mean that you become a robot and you do the same thing every every single day. So as a fellow entrepreneur, I know what it's like to wear all the hats in your business, right? I'm a woman. I'm a parent. I'm a wife. I'm a dog mom. I'm a volunteer in addition to doing all the things with my business. So like you, I have a full and busy chosen life of which my business is only one part. And running your own business is not easy. And one of the many pitfalls of entrepreneurship is the stress of overwhelm. And it's almost inevitable. Everybody gets overwhelmed. And when we do get overwhelmed, we tend to get hyper-focused on the to-do list and neglect our own needs. Or worse, we procrastinate with busy work. Or worse than that, we spin out and get stuck and don't get anything done. And it really doesn't need to be this way. We are not machines. We are human beings who need nurturing and care. And we must prioritize ourselves ahead of everything else, despite or perhaps because of all of the work that needs to get done. So having an intentional morning routine is a simple way to serve your whole self so that you can start your day with ease, confidence, energy, and clarity that you and your business deserve. So what is a morning routine? Like I said earlier, most people hear the words morning routine and the word that they plop in that place is monotonous. I can't do the same thing every day, day in and day out. And I'm here to push back on that. I don't know that it is required that it happens on autopilot. I think that you can do a different thing every single day and still follow a routine. 
So we all have morning habits, right? And whether yours starts with an alarm clock or a pet who is tired of watching you sleep or a child who needs attention or the gentle sunrise doing its thing, most of us begin our day by waking up and shuffling out of bed. Once we're up, we tend to our personal care and maybe you change out of your pajamas, maybe not. And then we head out of our bedroom and we face the world. From here, anything goes. And that's where the danger lies. Because if your personal morning routine doesn't lead you into a business morning routine, then that's where I think there's risk. You have risks risks of falling into distraction, falling into reaction, or otherwise derailing your day by not following any routine at all. Have you ever started the day thinking that you wanted to get something done and then you get up and you get to work and you get sucked into email or social media or news or chats. Anybody else? I got my hand raised right here. Then what happens is you look up and it's past lunchtime and you've been busy doing stuff, right? You've been busy doing things all morning. Your entire time has been full of you doing active things, but you're not really making any progress on the big goals. And that's, I think, where the problem lies. I think we can all agree on that. Like that's, I don't even know that that's up for debate. And it isn't fun when this happens. I think that most people, myself included, have experienced this more than we can admit. And while it isn't optimal, the first thing we need to do is to stop beating ourselves up when we fall short. Okay. I think that's really important. I think the negative self-talk and the, the way that we talk poorly to ourselves. Like we say things to ourselves that we would never say to the loved ones and our friends. You know, if your friend called you up and said, oh my gosh, this morning I got up and I just got into social media and it was hours before I could do any work. And when I did the work, I got into email first and I didn't get any of my goals done today. Are you going to call them a moron and say, oh my God, I can't believe you did that again. You know better than this. You are better than this. You're stupid. No, you're never going to say those things to your friends. So I want you to make sure that you don't say those things to yourself, okay? Instead of beating ourselves up when we fall short, we can identify the behaviors that we want to change, acknowledge that we need more support in that department, and then we can work to create a plan that will shift our behaviors in the desired direction. Now, notice I don't say that we're going to change all of our behaviors and we're going to have a different day tomorrow and everything's going to change. Absolutely not. We are gigantic ships moving through the ocean, right? And if you've ever been on a boat or if you can appreciate the analogy of a gigantic ship versus a tiny little speedboat, we are ships. And so when it's time to make a change, we're talking about spinning that huge wheel, a full turn and inching us two degrees to the left or to the right. You can't expect overnight success and you cannot overhaul. Now, if you've listened so far to my other three episodes on this podcast, whenever I talk about shifting and making changes, I actually will say no overhauls. You can't do it if you're going to overhaul. Even if you're trying to break a super duper toxic habit, Like I remember years ago when I was pregnant with my kids and my obstetrician and I were talking about the fact that I drink caffeine like professionally. I am a professional tea drinker. I drink 100% caffeinated tea, black tea, the darker, the better. I don't like coffee, but I I love tea. And he said, look, just kind of cut it back. Just make it a little bit less and a little bit less. Don't cut it out. He goes, because the stress of cutting it out is going to cause you is actually going to be worse for you and the baby than it would be if you just kind of reduced it and kind of moved it to the right direction. So that's what I'm talking about when I talk about making shifts that will move our behaviors into the desired direction. We want to keep correcting in the right direction. We don't need overhauls. So I think I've that's, this is one of those things that is going to be just a common occurrence in, in anything that I talk about in my classes or in my podcasts or, or in my emails. It's just one of those things that you can't overstate. No overhauls allowed. So one of the easiest ways to support yourself from derailing your day 
is a morning routine. And the best kind of morning routine is the one that is made to fit you. So do you have a morning workout habit? Do you leave the house and hit the gym or do you drop the kids off at school? Or are you like me and you work from home and your day starts with tea and journaling and personal time? If you don't have anything consistent already, I urge you to create a new routine. And if you already have some regular morning activities, well, then that's really good. Most of us do. And that's where you build on the things that you already do on a regular basis. And you craft an intentional plan that carries you from your wake up to your desk and into flow. And so I wanted to share a little bit about my morning routine with you. And this is what it looks like on most days. And I say most days because it's not something that happens every single day with 100% regularity. 100% perfection isn't, isn't possible. It's not even attainable. It's really not desirable. And I don't even like to use the word perfection here because it's not something that we're striving for. What we're doing here is trying to create a flow, trying to create a pipeline, you know, like we're like we're the, the toboggan team, the bobsled team, and we're sending ourselves down the chute so that when we get to the finish line, we are ready to go. We have done the things that we need to do. And it's not necessarily on autopilot in that it's mindless, but it is so natural for us that it doesn't actually take a lot of work to get these things to happen. And I'll give you an, I'll walk you through my own. So no matter what time I wake up in the mornings, uh, we have three dogs and one of my dogs, Nora, she'll hop into bed because she's the one that's like, you know, my dog. Uh, we have Nora and Ruby and Maisie. They're the sweetest little babies. Um, but Nora is the one who, as soon as she notices that I'm awake, she'll hop up into bed with me and we snuggle for a little bit before I get rocking on my day. But once I'm up, brush my teeth, shiny and new, get dressed. I get dressed all the way into my workout clothes, down to my sneakers. And I head downstairs and I stop in the kitchen, let the dogs out, boil the kettle for tea. I get on the treadmill. I do a 20 minute workout. And this is actually something that just recently changed. I used to let the dogs out, sit down, have a cup of tea, start my journaling. And then sometime during the day, I would do a half an hour um, high intensity walk, hike and walk. I need a uh, low impact because my poor knees. But I recently started doing two workouts a day for 20 minutes each. I do one as soon as I wake up before I do anything else. And then I do another one before I go to bed. So that's new. And that's something that I'm really loving. And it was not part of my routine. And I just kind of adjusted my routine. So that's another lesson that your routine is pliable and it's fluid as long as it gets you where you want to go. Okay. So now I wake up, let the dogs out, let the dogs back in, get on the treadmill for a 20 minute workout. Then I go back to the kitchen, boil some tea, sit down, have a tea. Once I have my tea, I head into my office and I sit down at my desk. And when I arrive at my desk, my stuff is really all laid out because I have a closed down routine at, in uh, an evening routine for my business stuff. And that That routine actually sets me up for my morning routine, which is something else, I guess we can talk about it in a different episode. So when I sit down, my journal is waiting for me with my favorite pen. And right now I am doing the artist's way. So I'm being very, very mindful about my 30 minutes of morning pages. Um, And it's not actually 30 minutes of morning pages is required for artist's way. It's three pages of writing for the artist's way. And that usually takes me 30 minutes. So I plan for about 30 minutes of that. And then I meditate for at least 10 minutes. And then I flip open my planner and I find today's date and I see my list of three things. Um, And it's interesting. I recently purchased Michael Hyatt's Full Focus Planner, which was recommended by Amy Porterfield. And I love it. And this is coming from somebody who I actually used to create and sell my own planners. Um, But the Full Focus Planner is just, it is simplicity on paper. I used to use my top three things. They were written on either a post-it note or I used to get, um, I still have four by six index cards. And every night before I would shut down, I would write down tomorrow's three things that had to happen. These are the must-dos for tomorrow. 
And when I sat down at my desk, that was the thing that was topmost on my little stack of stuff that I do in the mornings. But now it's my full focus planner and that has in it the big three for the day, which is just, it's really working for me so far. So that's really great. Anyway, after I do my, uh, my journaling, I break out my planner and then I wake up my computer and without fail, my computer screen, when I wake it up from being qu- uh, dark, I can't, I can't find the words for this. When I wake up my computer, my monitor comes alive and the first thing on there is my manuscript because right now I am under a deadline and if my publisher is listening, I'm sorry, it's coming. But the first thing that I have to do is my writing. So I have a daily word count goal and that's something that I uh, do first thing for my work and that's my number one on my big three. So my monitor will show me my document and my notes side by side on my screen so that I'm not having to look at social media or the news or my email or anything else. It's the only thing that's there. And it's a reminder actually as well. It's a message to myself like, hey, don't forget, this is the promise that you made to yourself. Whether or not I'm successful in getting all of my words done in a given day, you know, is hit or miss. And that's a whole different, that's a whole different podcast episode. But that's how I go. And that's the thing that gets me started. My morning routine protects me, right? It protects me from social media. It protects me from my phone. It protects me from my email. Slack is turned off. Messenger is closed. The only thing that I do when I get started on my computer is my work. And the biggest benefit of this is that I I'm in control and each of these things is mindfully chosen by me because it works for me. And I know that if I'm able to be rigid in sticking to these plans, that I will see the rewards at the end of the day, at the end of the week, at the end of the month, at the end of the goal deadline. So the only way that I'm successful at this is because of my routine, right? Because honestly, I'm not superwoman. I'm not strong enough to resist the pull of social media and those little hits of dopamine that I get from answering emails and checking things off my list because those things are deadly for my productivity. And I know I have to avoid them in the mornings. I slate time during my day for social media and for email and for Slack and for Messenger. But my morning routine is my path for success. Now, because I don't get on social media or check email or messages first thing, I actually get more done, period, full stop. There's really not else, nothing else here to, to explain about that because for me, and I know for many people that I speak to and a lot of my clients, the, the problem is getting started, right? And well, But once you get started, you, you force yourself through that barrier well, then you're going, you know what to do. You know what you're supposed to do. You know how to do the things you need to do. You just have to do it. Right. And it's like Mel Robbins says, you know, the five, four, three, two, one, just do it, get going. So the combination of having my desk primed for me the night before and the routine in the morning when I arrive directs my attention from the moment I wake up until I get at least my first thing done. It's been an amazing boon for my focus and my productivity. And it again, it is not perfect. I don't always get everything done. I don't always have success because life happens. You know, I have kids, I have pets. My husband also works from home. You know, we're all our worst, our, our worst enemies with these things. But the morning routine keeps me on task more often than it doesn't. And that's where the value is. I know that I'm not going to get pulled into reaction mode on emails or, or messenger or texts, and my phone is on silent so the notifications can't reach me, I don't even look at anything on my screens until at least noon. And that's on my best days, right? And when that happens, when the buzzer rings and it's noon and I have done my first block of work time, I feel an incredible sense of accomplishment every single time that I'm able to actually get to that point without having cheated. Because the only person that I'm cheating is myself, right? And notice that I say every time I'm able to stick to my plan because, again, I'm not perfect on executing my morning routine. 
If I had to guess, I'd say I'm able to stay true to my morning routine 80 to 85% of the time, which equates to about 20 to 21 out of every 25 weekdays in a month. So, you know, I think that's pretty good. I get most of my stuff done and I'll take it. I don't feel the least bit guilty on the days when my morning gets derailed. And the way that I look at it, perfection here, again, it's unrealistic. And so I'm happy with the majority of the time going to plan. And the best part about all of this is that we get to start over tomorrow every single day. So what does your morning routine look like? Or rather, what would you like your morning routine to look like? And what do you want your morning routine to feel like? So if you're able, I would love it if you would pause this podcast. And of course, if you're driving while you're listening to this, please don't do anything, but can maybe come back to it when you're home or when you're at a place where you can do so. But write down or think of some words that would describe the feeling of your ideal morning. For me, those words are centered, grounded, placid, aware, energized, focused, present, eager, and calm. And you can use every single one of my words, like borrow that whole vibe if that's what you're looking for. Now, the next part of this is I want you to think about some activities that can get you there. The purpose here is not to complicate your morning, right? We aren't trying to add to the work and add to the stress. We're not trying to overhaul. The goal is to carve out 30 to 60 minutes to nurture yourself so that you can bring your top game to your work. So with that in mind, what are two to three activities that could bring your morning words into reality? For me, it's journaling, meditation, tea, and walking. Sometimes it's yoga. Sometimes it's reading a book. Sometimes for some people, it's tending a garden or listening to a podcast, right? Any of these things could be potential morning activities and you get to choose. So once you identify the words for the feeling that you want to have from your morning routine, then you need to identify the activities that are going to bring you there. And then what you do is you build. If meditation is one of the things that you, can, that you add to your list of things that you want to do or you want to learn or you want to try, you can't block out 30 minutes of meditation if you've never been a meditator before. Like, you know, for me, 10 minutes is really all I can do. Even though I have been meditating for a really long time and I have meditated for longer chunks of time, 10 minutes in the morning on a work day is absolutely all I need. Doing more is wonderful, but it's not really something that helps me on my work days. Once you have a morning routine crafted, what you need to do is dovetail that into your business routine. So in addition to identifying the practices, the activities that are going to get you to the feelings that you want, the desired feelings for your morning routine, you need to try to figure out what one activity will be the perfect segue into landing at your desk and starting your work. When you're thinking about your business morning routine, I want you to think about uh, the, the big rocks. Do you know the story about putting the big rocks in first? Franklin Covey made this popular years and years ago with his seven ha habits of highly effective people and his productivity training programs. But the core message is you have big rocks, small pebbles, and teeny tiny sand. And all of these things must fit into a jar. And if you put the sand, which is a metaphor for the little things, if you put the sand in first, that's going to fill the jar and you can't make room for the pebbles and the rocks. But if you put the big rocks in first, which are the big important tasks, and then the pebbles after the big rocks, and then the sand, not only does all of it fit, but you actually end up with room for some water to top it off to fit into every last pocket of space. So the order in which you do things actually does matter. So the jar, of course, in this analogy is our time. 
and it's the way that we choose to fill it. The order in which you tackle your tasks, it's vitally important to your success. So thinking about today, tomorrow, the coming weeks, what are your big rocks? What are the things that absolutely must get done in order for you to be successful in your business? What are your pebbles? What are those secondary priority items that still have to get done but don't need to be first? And then all the other things that we do in a day, those are the sand. Those are the things that you don't actually add to your to-do list because they happen all the time and they happen whether or not you, you plan them. So make a list of your first priority tasks and your second priority tasks. And you get to choose if you're going to do this for a week or for the next two weeks or for the next month. I would advise doing it, you know, no more than a month. Um, simply because then this exercise becomes a task and you don't want that. This is, you want to help move yourself into ease. You don't want to be adding more to the list, right? So pick a small enough chunk that you have enough activities and enough goals and tasks that you need to get done, but not too big of a chunk of time where this exercise in itself becomes overwhelming. Now we're going to look at the workday. So one of the benefits of being an entrepreneur, right, is the freedom. It's the freedom and the control that we have over our schedule. And one of the best tips to working smarter and not working harder is to tee up your work for yourself so you know exactly what you're going to do the second you sit down at your desk. So for me, right, that's the fact that my monitor is queued up from my manuscript if that's the one thing that I'm doing the next day. So imagine that you look at a single day, right? And let's, let's just call it a nine to five for simplicity's sake. And we're looking at, you know, a 12 hour block of time. You have to block off time on your schedule for your morning routine. So whether that's 30 or 60 minutes, you know, go ahead and, and hash that out. This is where you have all the distractions turned off. And you are doing your morning routine that's not at your desk. And then you sit down at your desk. And one thing that you can do is identify your top three, right? Your big three. And identify three blocks of time in which you can do item one, item two, item three. So if these are the first priority project block, second priority project block, third priority block, whatever you need that works for your work. Right after your morning routine, you're going to sit down, you're going to start in on block one. And now this is single focus, really dedicated time, just working on task number one. You can do Pomodoros, which is the, the timer method where you have a 25 minute timer with a five minute break and then another 25 minutes with a five minute break. And that will give you 50 minutes of working in a 10 minute break in an hour, which is a wonderful method. It's something that I use. It It's almost fail safe because mentally you can say, oh, I can do anything for 25 minutes, like truly, because we all really can. So you finish with your first single focus task block. When the time is up, you get a five minute break. You can make that a, a, a potty break. You can make that a social media break. You can get up and just do a couple of jumping jacks or some stretches, or you can close your eyes and do some breath work. You get to decide what happens in that five minutes. But the important thing here is that you set your timer for five minutes right? So you don't get lost down the rabbit hole. There's a couple of, um, there's a Chrome extension I know of for sure, but there's several apps that you can download that'll do the Pomodoro for you. So you set it and it does a 25 minutes and then it does a five minute and then it starts again with a 25 minutes. So you don't have to think about it. So once the timer goes off again and it says, okay, time to get back to work, you start work on your second work block. Now this can be a continuation of the first project. Or you can shift into something new, followed by another timed break, and then a third block. And you can continue working in this way. And I find this to be especially helpful because, you know, right now as a writer, I have um, a manuscript that I'm working on. But, you know, as much as I would love to be able to work on my manuscript for eight hours a day, I can't. Like, I just, I don't have the juice to do an eight hour block of writing. I have done it. It's not pretty and it's not something that I like to do. So my first and second work blocks are writing on the days that I'm writing. That gives me a couple of hours of solid writing time. And then I have to move on to something else because I'm not able to really tap into that kind of creativity for any real stretch of time, like a five hour block. I just can't do it. So 
you use your timer and you set your alarms on your phone or on your computer and it keeps you on track so that when your workday is done, you get a few minutes to start your evening shutdown routine and allows you to organize your workspace so that it's ready for tomorrow. And I have a visual for this that I, I, I share when I do this in classes. And basically what it looks like is a 12 hour strip of like your day at a glance. And it's an, an hour of one color and a second hour of a different color. And then the next is a timer break and then another color and then a time break and then another color. And the work time is back to back to back to back to back with these slated breaks in between. It's really uniform and it's completely unrealistic for how we work, but it's an ideal. So you set the ideal and you try to strive to hit as close as you can to these targets. And I promise you that if you're intentional about the work, you will actually get more done. And I'm going to take an aside here and talk about, you know, the name of this podcast is The Calm Entrepreneur. And, you know, all of my coaching is not about productivity. It's not a, it's, let's, let me correct that. It is about being productive, but it's not about being productive so that you can get more things done. It's about getting your daily work done more efficiently so that you have more free time. What you do with that free time is completely up to you. If you choose to fill that with work, you know what? Everybody does their thing. You do you. But if you have to do these 10 things in a day and I can help you get those 10 things done in less time than it typically takes you. And then you have more free time to go for a walk, to sit and do absolutely nothing, to read a book, to do something fun, to just have quiet. That's the goal here, right? So yes, we're talking about being productive and yes, we're talking about being efficient, but no, we are not talking about opening up more blocks of time to fill it with more to do. That's the opposite of what we're doing here. Benjamin Franklin said, for every minute spent organizing, an hour is earned. And I have experienced that. I find that if you take the time to organize a morning routine for your person and then a morning routine for your business that launches your day and then an evening routine to shut you down, to get you teed up for tomorrow morning, the time savings is not just time. It's not just time. It's actually brain space. So if your goal is to become a more calm entrepreneur, if your goal is to live a more easeful life, even though we have a thousand things that have to get done, there's no reason we have to be frantic and frenetic and stressed in the doing of the things, right? So what's next? Several times during the course of this episode, I talked about my own evening routine. And I think about these things, the morning routine and the evening routine, as a bookend on my day, right? It's prep and it's wrap up. And the wrap up is actually prep for the next day. So just like the morning routine is something that you can tailor and personalize for yourself, the evening routine is the same. It really does depend on what each day is going to look like for you and you can change your evening routine every evening, depending on what's happening first thing tomorrow. But some of the things that I do um, is I actually set up a 30 minute window at the end of my day to do the following things. I clear up my workstation. I get rid of paper and clutter and I put everything away. That includes any notebooks that I'm using, any reading materials, um, I use post-it notes to save my place. I keep track of all the things that I'm doing. And if I'm working on something regularly, like for example, I am doing the artist's way, which is the 12 week workshop with several creative friends of mine. And that book is staying on my desk, but I'm putting it away. I'm putting a bookmark in where I'm at and I'm putting it to the side so that when I sit down, my desk is clear. My workstation is clear. Then I look ahead to my calendar for tomorrow and I look at um, identifying anything that I'm going to be working on in my priority work blocks. So what are my big three, right? For me, that's writing. So like I said, I will have that written down on my list for tomorrow. So if you have a planner, write down one, two, three, and the big, the big three for tomorrow, 
If you don't use a planner, if you type that down, and if you just want to use it on a post-it note, it doesn't make a difference how this information is prepared for you. But writing down the things that absolutely must happen tomorrow takes them out of your brain. It makes it so that you can like walk away and not think about them because you know that you're ready for tomorrow. So look ahead for tomorrow. Identify what you're going to be working on in your priority work blocks and make a short list somewhere that you'll see that first thing in the morning. Then prepare your computer if possible so that when you open it tomorrow, it opens to your first priority task, which is your first work block project. And this shouldn't need to be said, but I'm going to say it does not It should not be email, social media, news, or anything that is other people's priorities, right? You should always make sure that the things that you're doing are your priorities first. Then take a moment to reflect and record how the day went. I want you to write down the things that you felt and how did you feel stress-wise, right? Did you have wins? Did you have a stumble? Were you feeling overwhelmed? Was there an area or a project or something that wasn't working and something that really felt great? Okay. If you are a journaler, I have some journal questions that you can ask for yourself, but these are the things that I think that you should think about at the end of each day. Something I am proud of today is, and fill in the blank, I could have improved, fill in the blank. I'd like to learn more about, fill in the blank. Something new that I learned today was, That's something that I love to do. And I talked about that in, um, I think it was in the very first episode of this podcast, episode one on mindset. I talked about the mentee mindset and the beginner's mindset and how I really do relish the opportunity to identify the thing that I learned that was new today. I learned something new today. That's a big, big deal. Like never stop, never stop, never stop. And finally, the last thing that I usually ask myself is I'm grateful for, and I have a place in my planner that I write that. You can write one thing. You can write 10 things. You could do 11 because some people feel like the 11 is the magical number. Whatever works for you. These are some questions that you can ask yourself. And I'm going to actually write these down um, on the the show notes, which you will find at corinnoflynn.com forward slash episode four. And that's the word episode and the digit four with no spaces. Um, so that you can follow through if you didn't have a chance to write these down or if you're not in a place where you can do that. So as you settle into a personal morning routine and you follow that up with a business morning routine, and then you follow that up with a shutdown routine, my hope is that you'll find yourself accomplishing more of the things that matter and feeling less stress because you're nurturing yourself as well as your business. And you're discovering that you actually have more time left at the end of each day simply because you didn't have to waste time thinking about what to do next and your focus blocks resulted in real progress. A mindful approach to your life and your business will reap benefits beyond what the outside world considers success and achievement, which as a calm entrepreneur is, I really want to change the way we talk about those things. Success and achievement is is not everything, right? And we get to change the way that we think about those things. Did I achieve most of what I set out to achieve today? Then yes, achievement and success were mine. My goal with the Calm Entrepreneur podcast and the Calm Entrepreneur coaching is not to help you get more things done. It's to help you become more efficient so that you get your work done in less time, which gives you more time freedom. That's my goal. You may choose to add more work to the time you get freed up by getting more organized in this way. That's totally up to you. But there's nothing like having streamlined business admin, intuitive business systems, and solid foundational practices to make the things that you do every day a little bit simpler, less time consuming, and more organized. So that's it. That's what I'm all about. That's what I hope you got something out of this podcast. I hope to hear from you, actually. Please email me at hello at corinneoflynn.com and let me know if you have a morning routine, if you tweaked your morning routine after hearing this episode, or if you found the journaling prompts useful or helpful. I really would love to hear from you. I answer every single email that I receive personally. And if there's something that you want me to talk about in a future podcast episode, hey, I'm all ears. Let me know. I'm here for you. 
And I just, I hope that we get to change the way we talk about productivity and success and business and all the things, because it's time, it's time that we put our human hearts and bodies first and stopped thinking about just getting it all done. Okay, that's it. This is Karen signing off. Thank you so much for listening and have a great week. Remember, part of being a calm entrepreneur is developing the systems, habits, and know-how that lets you know that you are the one in the driver's seat. You get to choose how you run your business and you get to choose how you work. So you got this. I hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of the Calm Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm Corinne O'Flynn, and if this episode was valuable to you, please head on over and rate and review wherever you consume your podcasts. Please subscribe so you'll never miss an episode. New episodes go out each week on Tuesdays, and I look forward to hanging with you again. This is Corinne signing off. Have an excellent day.